welcome back to another video right today I'm going to show you how to break down a deer carcass at home I'm going to start off with doing this roe deer lovely local beast weighs about 40 45 pounds and it's a cracking animal so what I'm going to do today is show you how to break it up ready for the freezer there's going to be no complicated butchery it's just straightforward and then if this video is popular, I'll do more of a refined butchery. But today, this is just a basic breakdown of a row. But this will work on any species of deer. So, got my boning knife. So I'm going to start off by breaking it down into primals. So I'm going to remove the shoulders first. And just run your knife underneath the shoulder. And it's more connected by seams. So just run your knife underneath and then that is one shoulder removed. You can see, just get your knife and run it straight down just like that. And I'll remove the haunches now. So if you feel with your thumb, top of the haunch and the base of the loin, you should feel an indentation. So you just get your knife, just put your knife in, and then mark across just like that. And the same on the other side, you should feel it just there. So that's the indensity, make your mark there, and then you get your bone saw and just saw all the way through. And then when you stop, you stop sawing when you go through the bone. And then just finish it off with your knife. So now we're going to work on these legs or haunches. So just mark through here. And then with your saw, come through this bone. Now I'll give you a tip, because you've got to take off the tail, if you have it facing this way with your knife, just come down the side of the tail and then kind of gently but firmly prise them apart and this will just release the meat off that tailbone so then you've got one haunch off and for the second one just grip the tail and give that a pull and it will get the meat off it and then you just finish it off and that is the tail removed so I'll put that down there on my pile so my last video I've done on venison butchery was butchering out a haunch of venison and I tunnel boned it and tied it up. So what I'm going to do on this one, we're just going to take off bottom part of the shank. So with your saw, just go through the bone and then when it snaps, just finish it off with your knife. Then this is one leg ready to be butchered up. So I'm just going to do a bit of trimming. Because some of this can go in your trim pile for mince, sausages or burgers. And then some of it like this will just be chucked away. So you just kind of get yourself two piles going. It's easier to trim up now 
before you start buttering it up. And then with my boning knife, I'm just trying to use, you know, just more like the tip and just the front part of it, just so I can skim along the fat easy. But you don't have to rush, you can just get yourself a good knife and spend a couple of hours just buttering up your deer. So I'm going to remove the H bone now which is this bone that comes down here so all you do is just trace it around and always move the meat around you don't want to be stood there jumping around your table or your block or whatever you just move the meat to wherever you find it comfortable to work on it So this is all you do is just trace it all around like that you, you will eventually start to see the shape of the bone and then with the tip just just keep following it around it will come eventually so I'm just trying to show you this one so just take your time and then you'll see where the H bone sits in the joint so with the tip just find the top of the joint and just work that off the H bone. Just going to leave here a bit more. So when you get the tip in, just work it around that ball joint. Coming underneath. And when you're boning out as well, it doesn't matter if you get a bit of meat still on the bone because you can um, just scrape it off and put it in a trim pile. So nothing will go to waste. Then you see the last bone comes down the side here. It's a bit of an odd shape. But you just work around it. And that's the H bone removed so this is ready now to be tunnel boned or left whole for roasting but because I done a tunnel bone video the other day I'm going to do something different with this leg I'm going to bone it in a different way so you remove your shank tip of the knife and just find the little dent where it goes in. So just get your knife tip, and if you feel along, like where the kneecap is and the tendon, the tip of the knife will go in. So just make your incision there, and you'll come to the joint. So just work your knife in the joint. your mark across here just round this size and you get a good view of it so just separate that tendon and then all the way through and that's your shank so I'm just wiping my hands try and clean as you go with butchery makes it so much easier to work with Yes, yeah, so we can do a little bit of light trimming on here, just getting this silver off. So, a different way of boning out the leg. So before I tunnel boned it, so this time, just with the tip of your knife, you can see you've got the top of the bone here and the base of the bone there. So if you get your knife, 
and just mark straight down and just keep opening up the muscle you'll come on top of the bone and then just work either side see the bone that's in there and just get your knife underneath come up that side come up there just work round that joint Break this bit off. And then that is another way to bone out a leg of venison. Different from the way I done the other day, but that's one. And we're going to sort it all out at the end. So then, next main body of the animal. Like I said, this isn't going to be. A refined buttery it's just a basic buttery so I take off the base of the breast here and on the other side if you trim that up a bit you can actually put that in your your mince pile so to remove the loins Stand the carcass on its end, and this is just the way I do it. I find it easy, but if you've got another way or you see another way, give it a go and work whatever works for you. So you can feel obviously the spine runs down. Now, some people take the loin high up in the neck, I don't. I actually take it off just base of the shoulder because I like to use the neck. So, with the tip of the knife, just mark it and, and just draw all the way down to the base. Just run your finger up and you'll be able to feel the base of the spine. So I just run my knife along the bottom and if you kind of fold it back at the same time towards you, you will almost kind of peel it off the um, top of the ribs. And all you do is run your knife along. And it peels off. I know there is a couple of different ways of doing it, but I've always done it this way. And when you do it a couple of times, it is quite easy. So I'll come up the neck a little bit, but then I come off the neck here. So I more or less just marked the neck. Because on a roe deer and a fallow, it's a beautiful cut of meat. And you can use it in obviously the sausages, the burgers, or as an actual joint itself. So I always take my loins up to the base of the neck if it's got a good neck on it. And then that is one loin or back strap removed. So repeat on the other side because I can see where I've took it. So I'll mark, I'll mark across the neck and I'll just bring my knife straight down. Just repeat the process again. I mean, this way I'm doing it, it looks awkward and complicated, but it's not. It's just the way I do it, and I find it quite easy to work with. But, like I was saying earlier on, this works with all species of deer. And it's just the size that obviously is going to be the issue. But the bigger the deer, you can get more cuts off it. Like your steaks on your haunch, obviously the size of your loins.
Alright, so that is the second one removed. And then spend a bit of time just taking off any bits of meat that's still on the carcass to put in a trim pile. And I'll get a tub shortly and start putting my trim in. So I'm just working my knife on the bone towards the base just to get off the last bits and just work in between the ribs just like this and you can spend a bit of time working on that you do get quite a bit of meat out of them and again put it straight in the trim pile so I'll do one more Right, I'm just going to have a quick tie chip of this and then we'll get on to removing the neck and we'll work on this second haunch. Right, I've just had to sort out. I've just got all my primals and my joints in there. So I'm going to sort, we'll sort them out one at a time. So right, let's work on this neck. Obviously where you take the head off them after you've shot them, it goes a bit dry. So I'll just mark off with my knife. Then with the bone saw, I'll just take the first ring off, and they can be tricky to saw, but it is actually easier to saw them one piece like this when it's on the body of the carcass, and trying to take the neck off and then work it. Main neck, I'm going to take off here. I'm going to keep it as one whole neck this time. I think because it's a pretty good old hefty lump of meat that is. And you just trim up the bottom. This is just all the dry bits where it's hung in the chiller. But that is pretty much good to go. So, so it's like I was saying, you can spend the time just to work among these ribs to get the meat off and to put it in your trim pile you don't want to waste anything and if you spend just like a couple of extra minutes you do get a bit of meat off them so I'm going to put mine to one side because I'm going to work on mine later on so we've done the neck that is removed we're going to work on a shoulder now a good sized shoulder like a row or a fallow you can keep whole and slow roast so I'm going to keep one hole and I'm going to use one for trim. So just remove the second, not the second, sorry, the front hock. So just score around with a bone saw. You can work it round with a knife and bone it off, but to be honest, it is easier just with a saw, just take it straight through. And that is one shoulder, just trimmed, ready for slow cooking. 
in the second shoulder I think we'll have a little bit of dice and have a little bit of trim let's have a nice mix so with your knife I'll just go get my chef's knife just go straight down to the bone and I mark it just a bit like that and then bone and knife just along like that and they are quite meaty these shoulders you can bone and roll them I will do a video on that and that's the main body of meat just behind the shoulder so I'm just following that bone around And you've got a nice lump of meat that we will dice up so we'll put that in front of my tray and then all these bits are just going to be get my trim pile It is quite satisfying when you get gifted um, a deer carcass or you shoot your own you take it home you butcher it and you've got enough meat in there to feed your family obviously depending on the deer size but you know you've got enough meat in there for a few weeks or a couple of months and you know exactly where your food's come from nothing better than wild meat So that is just the gist on getting the meat off the shoulder. So that's what I normally do. I normally have one shoulder for slow braising and then normally the second shoulder I'll do for trim. And then of course you can keep all your bones for the dog or to make stock or gravy and I have got a video on making game gravy and stock on my channel alright so I'm just taking off the last of that you can spend the time just going through this but a bit of sinew in there I'm not going to bother so I'm going to put that in my bone bin for later Now, the loins. Lay it out in front here. So I've got the thick end towards you. And I'll just mark off the side and give this a trim. I don't put this in my sausage. You've got a bit of silver side on there and it's not good for your mincer. So I don't put it in anyway. And then you lay it out and just score just down the second side because you've got a big nasty tendon which runs down the back. We call it the paddy whack. And you know if you get that because you can't chew it, it's completely inedible. that's the end of it finishes in there but yeah you can just make it out it's actually all this so we'll remove that and to remove the silver side the way I do it is just cut into a little bit of the loin and because this is my, a semi curved burning knife it actually kind of acts like a bit of a filleting knife as well I've got the knack of it so I'll just run it all the way at a 45 degree angle just like that and then all that silver skin comes off and then all you've got to do is just a bit of trimming up just get the last little bit of fat off and then eat undesirables that can go to trim that bit. 
Now that is one fillet or tenderloin or backstrap. Done. So just to show you again, trim up first. Mark off, run my knife, 45 degree angle, and that's it, just trim up any last bits, square it off, second line done. So now, work on this haunch. So the video the other day was me turning and boning. So I'm going to do that again. So with the tip of the knife, just start at the top of the bone and just work your way around. And then just trace it all along. Because this is the way you get your stakes haunches so if you're around here so you mark off the bone and just keep tracing around that bone throughout And I find this is a good way to kind of practice your bone in because normally with the um, tunnel bone method, obviously people can't see what's inside. So it doesn't matter if you kind of slashed the meat a bit, because no one's going to see it. Scrape the meat back at the same time. And then just release that big tendon and then cap around here. haunch you can put your meat back in but this is going to be cut for steaks so I'm just going to put all this in the bin and then we're going to get that cut up right so we're going to cut this haunch into steaks this is the bonus one so I'll just square it off and then that would make like a little chump a chump steak or dice or trim Put that in a tray. And just do a little bit of trimming up. Just around here. And then now. Just slice it into however thick steaks you want. I mean, these just look I mean, look at them 
Ooh, we'll put them on a barbie. I think I'm not on that later on. So we've got ridiculously hot weather at the minute. So yeah, this is say the tunnel bone haunch just staking up. Should be able to get one more out of this and then put the other bit. Yeah, manage one more. Then this can go in trim. Beautiful. Now for the boneless leg, you can't butterfly it in a way. So get your chef's knife or steak knife. And you just want to make it as flat as possible. Okay, get your string because you can keep this as it is and just roll it, or you could stuff it. But I'm going to keep mine as is. So you roll it back together, just like that. We'll just tie it up. And these are obviously fantastic roasting joints. Once I've tied it up, I'll just square it off. So lay on its side. And on the back. It's got like another little mini chump chop or chump steak. Dice trim. So that's a bit of a universal joint. Then that is your boneless tied leg of venison. And this bit, this can just be for dice. That was just that little bit of shoulder. So some of you might have noticed when I was working on the body of the row, that I didn't take the tenderloins out because the stalker beat me to it but normally I will remove the tenderloins out right then I'm going to have one more clear up and then we're going to see what we've got out of this row deer right so this is my row deer all broke down now it's an easy breakdown this video I will do more of a refined one in the future but this is ample for a family to be honest so you've got your boneless haunch of venison you've got five lovely great big thick haunch steaks and when I boned out the legs I did keep these as chump steaks then obviously you've got your neck for slow brazing two shanks for slow brazing and a whole shoulder you got your two loins that I just trim, you see me trim, I've just sliced up. Got about a kilo of dice, and I've got about a kilo of trim. And I've still got a little bit to work off the um, body cavity. But I hope you have liked this one. Just a basic breakdown, another row deer that you can put in your freezer. So keep an eye out for my channel for more buttery videos. And if you like this, please subscribe.